So welcome back everybody. Uh, yesterday we did a little video on getting leaf bags and making this little chicken fun zone. And then today I went back out in the morning and got another truckload of leaf bags, added some more stuff, and took about 30 minutes of the chickens, uh, footage of the chickens playing in here and having fun, kicking and scratching, and then, you know, and manuring the whole food forest. So I'll upload that as a separate video actually. Then I added a whole bunch of leaves to this area as a mulch, just to kind of help break down all the the chicken manure that's built up over the summer here and I added a you know rickety little log fest back there for them to climb up and play in I'm hoping maybe jump off into the leaves we'll see if we get lucky enough to capture some of that and uh, then I'll upload the about 30 minutes of chicken TV and I plan on doing that almost like a, a dog babysitting you know for pets actually maybe cats might like it as well just a little pet babysitting video I know that those are actually popular on YouTube so I might as well get one up so I got the chickens to film so let's go check out what else we got going on one of the most common questions that I get is how do I amend my soils when I have you know a back to Eden deep wood chip mulch method should I put leaves or compost on top should I rake the wood chips back and put the stuff on um, underneath the wood chips and rake them back over and the answer is basically not necessarily clear and the same everywhere and what I've decided to do over the past couple years has changed so let me just walk through that and I'll tell you what I do with my gardens and how it's evolved over the years I used to actually rake all the wood chips back put all the manure and compost from my annual gardens down put the wood chips back on top and then for perennials, I would rake all the wood chips back. I would put leaves down, shredded leaves, and then I'd put the wood chips back on top of that. I actually think that that's not ideal, and let's go talk about that. Okay, so one of the reasons why is that time and experience are actually very valuable tools, and I've gained a lot of it over the last seven or so years doing permaculture. And one thing that I've really noticed and changed a lot is how I amend my soils. And I'll show you now... Um, this area here used to actually be like four feet tall of piles of leaves, believe it or not. And now it's basically flush and even to the ground. And this is what it looks like. I mean, it's basically all gone and it's pretty much turned into soil. You know, if I go a little bit deeper, it's really basically just dirt. It's like pure dirt now. So this is actually an area that even just two years later is actually in need of more uh, mulch, more leaves, more wood chips, whatever I want to use for mulch. It needs more of it. It's basically all decomposed and turned into soil. So I'll probably go out and get some leaf bags for that. Because of how quickly things actually turn over, this area here is actually, it probably was close to this last year probably turned over a majority in about one year it'll turn over faster if you have got a lot of moisture in your environment it'll turn over faster if you're warmer so temperature and wetness will help accelerate how quickly things break down um, for here leaves actually will break down really fast I would say wood chips break down anywhere from anywhere from maybe three to ten times slower then leaves will break down but leaves will break down really quick so wherever you add leaves and shredded leaves as your mulch layer you'll probably need to do it again next year because of that I don't really see a lot of value in raking back the mulch layer and then putting new leaves down and returning the mulch layer you probably won't have that much left and even if you had wood chips if you have maybe uh, two-year-old wood chips and you did it eight inches thick or so then um, after like three years, you really don't have that much. The wood chips are breaking down. Even though the top layer may not look like it's breaking down, it is actually from the ground up. The top will look si somewhat similar for a long time, but you won't notice that it's compressing down and that the soil is building up underneath. So because of that, raking the wood chips back and destroying the mycelium network that's built up there, the mushroom network that's built up, I don't really think is ideal or needed. So if I'm mending a uh, perennial system, like a food forest strip, I'll actually just put the shredded leaves right on top. I won't pull back the wood chips anymore because uh, I'm, I'm doing too much damage to the mushroom network, it's really not needed. And it makes sense because if you think about what a forest does, a forest just drops leaves and everything is built on top. It never you know, rakes things back. It, it, it's just really not needed. Nature has 
solve the ability to handle you know smothering and smothering of organic matter it does it by mushrooms mushrooms basically are the teeth of the forest and break everything back down into nutrients so i would say if you're amending a food forest strip just dump your leaves right on top dump your new wood chips back on top and if you want to add like a compost um, to get a little bit of a bacterial thing going say you have kind of uh, leafy shrubs that want a bit of a mix of bacterial soil and fungal soil that you would get in wood chips you get the bacteria in compost and in manures then i would consider actually just instead of amending all at once to try to do it in um, piecemeal throughout the year and especially if you know that rain is coming just go out grab some of that compost sprinkle it all on top of your food forest let the rains capture that dilute it bring it down into the ground and then that way you're constantly amending your soil and you're not doing this huge fertility event where plants will kind of spike and grow and then not grow as they use up that fertility right it's always better to smooth things out and if you can do that then then i would say go do that it also allows you to kind of just sprinkle a little bit on the worms will come up and grab the leaves that are on top of the wood chips or the manure and they'll eat it and they'll bring it back down and they'll kind of cut holes through the wood chips like that so that air and water can get down these are all very valuable things for the actual soil biology and chemistry that's happening underneath your wood chips okay for the annual gardens you'll see that i actually still have quite a few of my tomatoes up and what i like to do is let as many of the plants transition throughout their full entire life cycle as possible that gets all the nutrients back down into the ground and it makes sure that when I clean up the plants out of my garden that I've captured as much nutrition out of them as possible because I'm just taking away essentially empty carbon bonds uh, when I pull that back and then that'll go in the compost pile to make sure I capture all of it but the other thing I do try to do is to really constantly be reseeding through the year so I want to get green as much as possible we've re-sowed a little bit more kale we've got some brussels sprouts in the back and I want to get as much photosynthesis going as possible throughout the full season because that photosynthesis energy is plant root exudates that are going down to the ground that's feeding my soil life all of that is building soil and I want to get that going as long as possible so for that reason I also have perennial greens that I sow, I sow into my annual garden such as the sorrel we've got cherry bushes we've got more kale that we spread around and I try to kind of keep as much green going in the gardens as possible but when I do finally come to this part um, of the year where I'm going to pull any of this back and re-amend I actually will pull back the wood chips in my annual garden and it's because the wood chips aren't as important and the mushroom mycelial layer is not as important for green leafy plants they don't need as much of a fungal dominated soil network so me doing a little bit of damage to the wood chips when i pull back this bed is not actually that detrimental as long as i'm not tilling and impacting the ground then i'll put my new layer of compost and biochar on top and then I'll put the wood chips back on. I'll usually scrape some from the pathways. So I'll scrape it right there and the pathways are all on contour and they collect water in the, in the year so they'll break down fast. I put that on top and then I'll put new wood chips for next year. They'll go in the pathways and then the year after the pathway wood chips will go on top of the gardens. That way the mulch that's on the garden is um, you know, a year's worth of broken down wood chips that's almost already turned into soil. And then the wood chips in the pathways is brand new high carbon wood chips that's going to take a little time to break down and it's really going to impede any kind of growth in the pathways, which is kind of perfect. That's exactly what I want. So that's how I amend my garden soils. I'll also make foliar sprays in the summer and I'll spray that onto the, onto the plants. I do that with comfrey tea and I also um, will... Uh, sprinkle a little bit of compost throughout the summer uh, on top directly on top of the gardens for the rains to wash in for small little miniature fertility events i'll usually time that in and around when things are flowering a comfrey tea is a really high um, uh, potassium and phosphorus addition whereas uh, like say grass or compost tea is a really decent nitrogen addition so when so that's what I do in my gardens. It's really, none of that stuff is required. If it sounds like too much work, you don't really have to worry about it. 
that's all just really taking it to the next level to get that extra boost of fertility and to be honest i mostly do it because i run the youtube channel and i want to get you know the gardens looking as good as possible especially in the summertime i want to get the produce as high as possible and i want to try things for science so that i can show you guys what works and what doesn't work Okay, last little update I wanted to show was the beehives, because I guess I haven't really shown these that much this year, and I just wanted to put it in another video. I know not everyone will watch every single video, so it's good to spread them out here and there. So we ran about, I think, 25 hives, and it was with, uh, through the help of a, a local apiarist who um, watches this channel, actually, and we got in touch, and he wanted to run his hives on our you know, beautiful permaculture, dense, uh, dense, diverse, flowering, uh, insect pollinator habitat creation ecosystem instead of in where they were, which was just in cornfields. And he lost 100% of his hives last year, so that was a very painful year for him. And he suspects it was all because of the, the farmers were spraying. So this year, he had an amazing run. All the hives survived so far. We'll see how they do in the wintertime. Um, but they're, they're pesticide and herbicide free here, so they're safe from that aspect. Another reason why I haven't done a detailed bee video guide yet is that I'm just, quite frankly, not that knowledgeable about it. Um, not to the level that I would feel comfortable doing a video. I really want to only focus doing my videos on things that I'm very, very experienced and knowledgeable about. And um, I don't like talking about things or doing videos about things until I develop that level of expertise and knowledge. I think it's my duty to the people who watch this channel to never just put a video out there on something that I don't actually know that much about. So that is one of the reasons why you won't see a video video from me about bees. You haven't seen one yet and probably won't for a while uh, because this is a very deep topic and something that I think needs a lot of experience uh, before you start talking about it. So there's other great bee uh, YouTubers out there and I would suggest if you're really into bee topic, check them out because I probably won't be doing a ton of videos on the technicalities of bees for that exact reason. I just don't think that it's um, ethical for me to do that. You know, and that's just my goal here and in general in life is I just wanna learn something new every single year. I wanna learn something new every single day. And especially if it's a skill that will help me be more res resilient in the future because we don't know what the future is going to look like. And if you're projecting forward, you know, gas prices and food prices and all of these things, ecosystem collapse, uh, climate change, all these concerns that we have, you can kind of get into this spiral of paralysis where you feel hopeless. And I want the opposite. I actually want to empower myself to develop as many skills as possible that will be good for now for even if things don't get bad and they'll also be good for if things do get bad and I'll be able to you know support the family and be more resilient to these kind of disruptions that we might face so um, I think it's a really good idea to just go out there and learn as much as possible try things out if they don't work the worst thing that you did was you lost a little bit of time gaining a skill that might be handy one day see you guys on the next one Go in and start making some dinner.